Hey everyone! Welcome back to Top 10 Amazing Facts, where we explore the most mind-blowing things from our world, and sometimes from worlds long gone. Now here's a wild thought. What if I told you that scientists today are actually working to bring extinct animals back to life? Not just in sci-fi movies, but in real labs, using actual DNA, gene editing, and cloning. From furry giants of the Ice Age to birds that vanished centuries ago, there are creatures scientists are seriously trying to resurrect. And some of them? They're really close. So let's jump in. Here are 10 extinct animals scientists want to bring back. Number 10. The Woolly Mammoth These shaggy, elephant-like giants once roamed the frozen tundras of Siberia and North America, stomping through snow like it was nothing. The last known mammoths didn't die out that long ago. A small herd survived on Wrangell Island in the Arctic until around 1650 BC. That's just a few centuries before the pyramids were finished. Now here's where it gets crazy. Scientists, especially the team at Colossal Biosciences, are working on bringing mammoths back using DNA editing tools. They're not cloning a full mammoth exactly, but they're editing the genes of Asian elephants to give them mammoth traits like thick fur, fat layers, and cold resistance. Why do this? It's not just for fun. These mammophants could help restore the Arctic tundra, which could actually slow down climate change. The idea is they'd stomp down trees, help regrow grasslands, and keep the permafrost from melting. So yeah, giant furry elephants might be walking around again in our lifetime. Next up at number nine is the Tasmanian tiger, also called the thylacine. And no, it's not actually a tiger. It was a marsupial predator that looked kind of like a dog, had stripes like a tiger, and even carried its babies in a pouch like a kangaroo. Nature really got creative with this one. The last known thylacine died in a zoo back in 1936. But here's the good news. Scientists in Australia, and again, at Colossal, are trying to bring it back using preserved DNA and the help of its closest living relative, the numbat. Why bring it back? because the ecosystem in Tasmania has totally changed since the thylacine disappeared. Without a top predator, invasive species are thriving and causing chaos. Researchers believe we could see a living thylacine, or at least a hybrid, in the next decade or so. Number 8. The Passenger Pigeon At one point, there were billions of these birds flying over North America. Their flocks were so huge they'd block out the sun for hours. But by 1914, they were gone. The last one, named Martha, died alone in the Cincinnati Zoo. So, what happened? Overhunting, habitat destruction, and, well, humans being humans. But here's the twist. A group called Revive and Restore is trying to bring the species back by editing the genes of the band-tailed pigeon, a close cousin, to reintroduce passenger pigeon traits. These birds didn't just fly, they were social animals that nested in massive colonies. So, scientists would have to figure out how to reintroduce those behaviors too. Still, the idea of skies filled with passenger pigeons again is pretty amazing. This next one at number 7 is wild. The Pyrenean ibex, or bucardo, was a mountain goat that lived in the Pyrenees Mountains in Spain. It officially went extinct in 2000, but here's the twist. It was actually brought back. Kind of. In 2003, scientists used frozen tissue from the last ibex and cloned it by implanting the DNA into a domestic goat. The baby ibex was born and lived for seven minutes before dying of lung prung problems. It became the first animal to go extinct, twice. But scientists didn't give up. They're refining the process, and with better cloning methods, we might actually see a second shot at a living bucardo, this time for more than a few minutes. Number six. The dodo, possibly the most famous extinct animal of all time. And yes, scientists want to bring it back too. The dodo lived on Mauritius, had no natural predators, and didn't fly. That didn't end well once humans showed up with rats, cats, and hunting parties. The whole species was gone by the late 1600s. Now, scientists have fully sequenced the dodo's DNA and are working with its closest living relative, the Nicobar pigeon, to try and create a modern dodo or something very close to one. But why bring back a dodo? Well, it could help restore island ecosystems and test the limits of de-extinction. Plus, who wouldn't want to see a dodo waddle around again? 
Number 5. The Gastric Brooding Frog Okay, this one is seriously weird. The gastric brooding frog was discovered in Australia in the 1970s and went extinct by the 1980s. But get this, it swallowed its own fertilized eggs, shut down its stomach acid, and gave birth through its mouth. Scientists actually managed to create embryos from frozen tissue in 2013, but none survived beyond early development. Still, it was a huge step forward. And beyond the shock factor, this frog could teach us medical secrets about digestion, acid control, and maybe even organ regeneration. Number 4. Now back to the Ice Age. The American Mastodon is often confused with the woolly mammoth, but it's a different beast entirely. It was stockier, had shorter tusks, and lived mostly in North America's woodlands. Unlike the mammoth, mastodons had flat teeth for chewing shrubs and branches. Scientists have recovered some mastodon DNA from frozen fossils. And while the DNA isn't as intact as mammoth DNA, the hope is that one day we could create a mastodon hybrid using similar techniques. Reviving mastodons could help us reconstruct North America's ancient ecosystems and give us more insight into how megafauna shaped our planet. Number 3. The Great Auk, a flightless seabird that looked like a northern penguin. It used to live on rocky islands in the North Atlantic, from Iceland to Canada. But by the 1800s, people hunted it for meat and feathers until the very last pair was killed. Today, scientists are using museum specimens to sequence the great auk's genome, its closest living relative, the razorbill. If researchers can edit its DNA, we might one day see great auks back in the wild, diving, swimming, and maybe even breeding on their old nesting grounds. Number two. The host's eagle. This animal was an actual monster of the skies. It lived in New Zealand and had a wingspan of up to 10 feet. It preyed on the giant moa, another extinct bird that stood taller than a person. After humans arrived and wiped out the moa, the host's eagle didn't last long. Scientists are fascinated by this predator and are studying eagle genomes to see if there's a way to bring it back through gene editing or selective breeding. Number 1. The Aurochs. All right, let's talk about an animal that isn't as famous as the mammoth or the dodo, but was once hugely important to human history, the aurochs. So, what was it? Picture a cow, but supersized, wild, and fierce. These were the ancestors of all domestic cattle, and they were massive. Some stood over six feet tall at the shoulder, with enormous forward-curving horns. They weren't just farm animals. They were the kings of the European wilderness for thousands of years. You'll even find them painted on ancient cave walls like, the, like those in Lascaux, France. That's how legendary they were. The last known aurochs died in 1627 in Poland. And after that, the species was officially gone. But here's the twist. Since all modern cows are descended from aurochs, their DNA never truly disappeared. And that's where scientists stepped in. Instead of cloning, researchers are using selective breeding programs basically taking modern cattle that still carry certain oryx-like traits and breeding them over generations to bring back an animal as close as possible to the original. This is sometimes called backbreeding. Why do this? Well, aurochs were incredible at shaping landscapes. Their grazing helped maintain open grasslands and balanced forests in Europe. Without them, a lot of ecosystems changed. Bringing back an aurochs-like animal could help restore natural grazing systems and bring back biodiversity that's been missing for centuries. And here's the really cool part. There are already herds of these new aurochs roaming reserves in Europe today. They're not exactly like the originals, but they're pretty close. Big, tough, wild cattle that look like they stepped out of a history book. Honorable mention, dinosaurs. Everyone always asks, when are we bringing back dinosaurs? But the truth is, Probably never. DNA just doesn't last 60 dive million years. So, no T-Rex coming to your neighborhood anytime soon. But, scientists are doing something kind of similar. They're trying to reverse engineer birds, especially chickens, to express ancient traits. Think tails, claws, and teeth. They're calling it the Chickenosaurus. Creepy? Yep. Awesome? Totally. Now let's discuss the ethics of de-extinction. Sure, bringing back extinct animals is cool, but there are a ton of ethical questions. What if they suffer in captivity? Where will they live? 
What if they become invasive or throw ecosystems off balance? And what about the animals we still have that are on the verge of extinction? Some scientists argue we should focus on protecting the living. Others believe that de-extinction could help us reverse the damage we've done. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. And while you're here, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and tap the notification bell so you never miss another wild countdown from Top 10 Amazing Facts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the past. Or maybe the future.